This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. President Biden got a big win this week as he signed a bipartisan infrastructure bill into law. Mr. Biden took part in a ceremonial bill signing event at the White House on Monday. The new law will provide $1 trillion in spending, including $550 billion for transportation, broadband access, and utilities. Virgin Islands Governor Albert Bryan Jr. issued a statement thanking the President and Congress for passing this bill, which he says will help his administration maintain its momentum when it comes to the efforts towards the territory's recovery and enhancing economic stability following the COVID-19 and during the COVID-19 pandemic. He said, quote, this is a landmark package of legislation that will bring the country, as well as the U.S. Virgin Islands, a much needed economic shot in the arm after the devastating financial effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor Bryan's also urging Congress to act quickly on the president's $1.75 trillion Build Back Better Act, which he says will also greatly benefit the territory. Under the current version of the Build Back Better Act, benefits to the USVI would include increases to Medicaid, funds for tuition, capital projects, climate change mitigation, and historic preservation and other assistance for community development. Here's more on what's in the bill signed this week. A bipartisan group of federal lawmakers and state and local officials joined President Joe Biden at the White House as he signed the physical infrastructure bill into law. I truly believe that 50 years from now, historians are going to look back at this moment and say, that's the moment America began to win the competition of the 21st century. This should be the beginning of a renewed effort to work together on big issues facing our country. The $1.2 trillion measure funds the repair of the nation's aging ports, roadways, and public transit, and it invests in clean drinking water and expanded broadband access. Former Democratic New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu has been tapped to oversee implementation of the legislation. As the president takes a legislative victory lap, his approval ratings, however, have dipped as concerns over rising inflation continue to grow. More than half of respondents to a new ABC News Washington Post survey said they disapprove of the job President Biden is doing. No one is denying that inflation and any, any element of raising costs is an issue for the American people. We're proposing solutions. In the short term, we have to continue to get COVID under control. In the medium and long term, we want to pass this agenda. The president will take his message directly to the American people again this week, traveling to New Hampshire and Michigan to tout both the infrastructure bill and his social spending and climate plan. This bill would save most families thousands of dollars per year in child care. House Democratic leaders say they want to vote on the nearly $2 trillion Build Back Better Act this week, setting up a partisan fight with Republicans who oppose the measure. To break the promises. Princess Cruz's newest royal class ship made its way to St. Thomas this weekend on its inaugural call. When Enchanted Princess stopped at the West Indian Company dock on Saturday, her fully vaccinated guests were greeted with culture, music, and dancing. Government and tourism leaders, along with other representatives, also welcomed the captain and crew with a small ceremony. Waco's president said Princess Cruises has been a valued cruise partner for more than 30 years and they were pleased to welcome the Enchanted Princess, a brand new ship, which as you can see, she's beautiful, as well as its passengers to the territory on its inaugural call this past weekend. With the holidays fast approaching, a growing number of people are planning to spend the time with family and loved ones. And this year, that means airports are going to be filled with holiday travelers. At airports nationwide last month, chaos as Southwest and American Airlines canceled more than 4,000 combined flights, citing bad weather and staffing shortages. The whole thing is just a big mess. It's really, really frustrating. Both airlines struggled to handle the unexpected surge in passenger traffic after the vaccine rollout. Airlines that lost staff during the pandemic found themselves shorthanded, unable to adjust when complications arose. 
Now the carriers are aggressively staffing up to avoid a potential nightmare repeat scenario as the holidays approach. Airplanes are going to be full. The demand for the holidays is really robust uh, and strong. For its part, Southwest is offering its staff frequent flyer miles worth up to $1,400 and as much as triple pay to entice them to work over the holidays. The airline says it's also on track to hire 5,000 additional employees through the winter. American Airlines says it too is moving aggressively, hoping to add nearly 3,200 flight attendants by December, offering a minimum of time and a half pay for staff working on peak travel days and $1,000 bonuses to employees with perfect attendance from November 15th to January 2nd. But the American Airlines Pilots Union has turned down the money, saying the airline has mismanaged its flight operations and extra pay won't fix delays. The issue is the infrastructure and operations after a weather event. The employees are available, the pilots are available, but if we can't get connected to the airplane, then your infrastructure is failing and you won't get the job done, no matter how much money you pump into it. Uh, unruly passenger, we need to get off the airplane. The FAA releasing this PSA after reporting more than 5,000 incidents of bad, even dangerous behavior so far this year, most of it mask-related. The latest on Sunday as a 32-year-old woman was arrested after allegedly verbally then physically assaulting a Southwest flight attendant on a flight from Dallas to New York. Now to the latest on COVID-19 case counts here in the territory. According to the latest numbers from the VI Department of Health, there are currently 62 active COVID-19 cases throughout the territory. There are 50 active cases on St. Croix right now eight in St. Thomas and four active cases on St. John. And those numbers are down significantly from just a week ago. So while COVID cases are on the decline here in the territory, that's certainly not the case everywhere right now, with many states across the nation seeing a spike in cases and hospitalizations. The nation's largest city is going all in on boosters for adults 18 and older, despite federal guidelines which recommend them only for certain populations. Reporter Sam Brock brings us all the very latest details. With COVID cases once again on the rise, health leaders coast to coast are trying to pump the brakes on an upward trend. Hi, it's Dr. Dave Choksi with an update about COVID-19 booster shots. New Yorkers likely recognize these ads with the city's health commissioner, who's been encouraging boosters for those 65 and older or with underlying health conditions. But now, with backing from the mayor, Dr. David Choksi offering them to all fully vaccinated adults six months clear of Pfizer and Moderna or two months after the J&J jab, some four and a half million people. We've seen uh, throughout the pandemic that we have to stay a step ahead of the virus. And the decision that New York City made was very much in that vein. That proactive posture coming as Colorado, California, New Mexico and Arkansas all issued the same guidance taking a looser interpretation of federal guidelines that allow boosters for high-risk populations. This as Americans try and sort through mixed messaging on boosters. I think the confusing message around the boosters may, may end up being one of the biggest missed opportunities in this pandemic. States and cities are trying to take the lead. The CDC says adults with increased risk of exposure should get the booster, and some local officials say that can cover all adults. How does New York City have the autonomy to make this decision? The commissioner's advisory that I issued today um, is consistent with the FDA authorization and the CDC guidance. An important part of that guidance is about risk of exposure. Even with all the talk about boosters, health officials emphasizing the most important shot is the first one. 